Earl of Sussex, L, also Ella or Ella, is recorded in early sources as the first king of the South Saxons, reigning in what is now called Sussex, England, from 477 to perhaps as late as 514. According to the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, Ellen three of his sons are said to have landed at a place called Simensora and fought against the local Britons. The Chronicle goes on to report a victory in 491, at present-day Pevensey, where the battle ended with the Saxons slaughtering their opponents to the last man. El was the first king recorded by the 8th century chronicler B to have held imperium, or overlordship, over other Anglo-Saxon kingdoms. In the late 9th century Anglo-Saxon chronicle, around 400 years after his time, El is recorded as being the first Bretwalda, or Britain ruler, though there is no evidence that this was a contemporary title. El's death is not recorded and although he may have been the founder of a South Saxon dynasty, there is no firm evidence linking him with later South Saxon rulers. The 12th century chronicler Henry of Huntingdon produced an enhanced version of the Anglo Saxon chronicle that included 514 as the date of El's death, but this is not secure. Historians are divided on the detail of El's life and existence as it was during the least documented period in English history of the last two millennia. By the early 5th century, Britain had been Roman for over 350 years. Amongst the enemies of Roman Britain were the Picts of central and northern Scotland, and the Gaels known as Scotty who were raiders from Ireland. Also vexatious were the Saxons, the name Roman writers gave to the peoples who lived in the northern part of what is now Germany and the southern part of the Jutland Peninsula. Saxon raids on the southern and eastern shores of England had been sufficiently alarming by the late 3rd century for the Romans to build the Saxon shore forts, and subsequently to establish the role of the Count off Saxon shore to command the defense against these incursions. Roman control of Britain finally ended in the early part of the 5th century. The date usually given as marking the end of Roman Britain is 410, when the Emperor Honorius sent letters to the British, urging them to look to their own defense. Britain had been repeatedly stripped of troops to support usurpers' claims to the Roman Empire, and after 410 the Roman armies never returned. Sources for events after this date are extremely scarce, but a tradition, reported as early as the mid 6th century by a British priest named Gildas, records that the British sent for help against the barbarians to Aetius a Roman consul, probably in the late 440s. No help came. Subsequently, a British leader named Vortigern is supposed to have invited continental mercenaries to help fight the Picts who were attacking from the north. The leaders, whose names are recorded as Hengist and Horsa, rebelled, and a long period of warfare ensued. The invaders, Angles, Saxons, Jutes, and Frisians, gained control of parts of England, but lost a major battle at Mons Badonicus the location of which is not known. Some authors have speculated that El may have led the Saxon forces at this battle, while others reject the idea out of hand. The British thus gained a respite, and peace lasted at least until the time Gildas was writing, that is, for perhaps 40 or 50 years, from around the end of 5th century until midway through the 6th. Shortly after Gildas's time the Anglo-Saxon advance was resumed, and by the late 6th century nearly all of southern England was under the control of the continental invaders. There are two early sources that mention El by name. The earliest is the Ecclesiastical History of the English People, a history of the English Church written in 731 by Bede, a Northumbrian monk. Bede mentions El as one of the Anglo-Saxon kings who exercised what he calls imperium over all the provinces south of the river Humber. Imperium is usually translated as overlordship. Bede gives a list of seven kings who held imperium, and El is the first of them. The other information Bede gives is that El was not a Christian. Bede mentions a later king as the first to enter the kingdom of heaven. The second source is the Anglo Saxon Chronicle, a collection of annals assembled in the kingdom of Wessex in circa 890, during the reign of Alfred the Great. The chronicle has three entries for El, from 477 to 491 as follows. The chronicle was put together about 400 years after these events. It is known that the analysts used material from earlier chronicles, as well as from oral sources such as sagas, but there is no way to tell where these lines came from. It should also be noted that the terms British and Welsh were used interchangeably, as Welsh is the Saxon word meaning foreigner, and was applied to all the native Romano-British of the era. Three of the places named may be identified. The Chronicle mentions El once more under the year 827, where he is listed as the first of the eight Bretwaldas, or Britain rulers. The list consists of Bede's original seven, plus Egbert of Wessex. 
There has been much scholarly debate over just what it meant to be a Bretwalda, and the extent of Al's actual power in southern England is an open question. It is also noteworthy that there is a long gap between El and the second king on Bede's list, Cialan of Wessex, whose reign began in the late 6th century, this may indicate a period in which Anglo-Saxon dominance was interrupted in some way. Earlier sources than Bede exist which mention the South Saxons, though they do not name El. The earliest reference is still quite late, however, at about 692, a charter of King Nuthelms, which styles him King of the South Saxons. Charters are documents which granted land to followers or to churchmen, and which would be witnessed by the kings who had power to grant the land. They are one of the key documentary sources for Anglo-Saxon history, but no original charters survived from earlier than 679. There are other early writers whose works can shed light on El's time, though they do not mention either him or his kingdom. Gildas's description of the state of Britain in his time is useful for understanding the ebb and flow of the Anglo-Saxon incursions. Procopius, a Byzantine historian, writing not long after Gildas, adds to the meager sources on population movement by including a chapter on England in one of his works. He records that the peoples of Britain, he names the English, the British, and the Frisians, were so numerous that they were migrating to the kingdom of the Franks in great numbers every year, although this is probably a reference to Britain's emigrating to Armorica to escape the Anglo-Saxon stop they subsequently gave their name to the area they settled as Brittany, or La Petite Britannia, lit, Little Britain. The early dates given in the Anglo-Saxon chronicle for the colonization of Sussex are supported by an analysis of the place names of the region. The strongest evidence comes from place names that end in ing, such as Worthing and Angmering. These are known to derive from an earlier form in Dinch and Ingus. Hastings, for example, derives from Hestingus, which may mean the followers or dependents of a person named Hesta, although others suggest the heavily Romanized region may have had names of Gallo-Roman origin derived from Eances. From west of Selsey Bill to east of Pevensey can be found the densest concentration of these names anywhere in Britain. There are a total of about 45 place names in Sussex of this form, but personal names either were not associated with these places or fell out of use. This does not necessarily mean that the Saxons killed or drove out almost all of the native population, despite the slaughter of the Britons reported in the Chronicle entry for 491, however, it does imply that the invasion was on a scale that left little space for the British. These lines of reasoning cannot prove the dates given in the chronicle, much less the details surrounding El himself, but they do support the idea of a nearly conquest and the establishment of a settled kingdom. If the dates given by the Anglo-Saxon chronicle are accurate to within half a century, then El's reign lies in the middle of the Anglo-Saxon expansion, and prior to the final conquest of the Britons. It also seems consistent with the dates given to assume that El's battles predate Mons Badonicus. This in turn would explain the long gap of fifty or more years, in the succession of the Bretwaldas, if the peace gained by the Britons did indeed hold till the second half of the 6th century, it is not to be expected that an Anglo-Saxon leader should have anything resembling overlordship of England during that time. The idea of a pause in the Anglo-Saxon advance is also supported by the account in Procopius of 6th century migration from Britain to the Kingdom of the Franks. Procopius's account is consistent with what is known to be a contemporary colonization of Armorica, now Brittany, in France. The settlers appear to have been at least partly from Dumnonia, modern Cornwall, and the area acquired regions known as Dumnonae and Cornuale. It seems likely that something at that time was interrupting the general flow of the Anglo Saxons from the continent to Britain. The dates for El's battles are also reasonably consistent with what is known of events in the Kingdom of the Franks at that time. Clovis I united the Franks into a single kingdom during the 480s and afterwards, and the Franks' ability to exercise power along the southern coast of the English Channel may have diverted Saxon adventurers to England rather than the continent. It is possible, therefore, that a historical king named El existed, who arrived from the continent in the late 5th century, and who conquered much of what is now Sussex. He may have been a prominent war chief with a leadership role in a federation of Anglo-Saxon groups fighting for territory in Britain at that time. This may be the origin of the reputation that led B to list him as holding overlordship over southern Britain. The battles listed in the Chronicle are compatible with the conquest of Sussex from west to east, against British resistance stiff enough to last 14 years. His area of military control may have extended as far as Hampshire and north to the Upper Thames Valley but it certainly did not extend across all of England south of the Humber, as Bede asserts. The historian Guy Halshall argues that Isel immediately preceded the late 6th-century King Seol in Espretwalda, 
it is far more likely that L dates to the mid-6th century, and that the Chronicle has moved his dates back a century in order to provide a foundation myth for Sussex which puts it chronologically and geographically between the origins of the kingdoms of Kent and Wessex. L's death is not recorded by the Chronicle, which gives no information about him, or his sons, or the South Saxons until 675, when the South Saxon king Ethelwa was baptized. It has been conjectured that, as Saxon war leader, L may have met his death in the disastrous Battle of Mount Baden when the Britons halted Saxon expansion. If L died within the borders of his own kingdom, then it may well have been that he was buried on High Down Hill with his weapons and ornaments in the usual mode of burial among the South Saxons. High Down Hill is the traditional burial place of the kings of Sussex. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.